Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the regular meeting of the Board of Adjustment. The board was created by the city charter to hear applications for variances from the zoning ordinance requirements and to hear and render decisions on interpretations of the requirements of the zoning ordinance. The board consists of five voting members. It requires four affirmative votes for approval of any variance or interpretation. All cases on the agenda will be heard in the order listed. The order of proceeding for each case shall be as follows. City staff will make a brief presentation outlining the application. The applicant shall present their case. Persons in favor of the variance shall present their evidence. Persons opposed to the variance shall present their evidence. The applicant shall be given a rebuttal period. The public hearing will be closed and no further testimony will be accepted. The normal procedure is that the board will discuss and take action on the application. All meetings of the board are open to the public. Anyone in the audience who thinks for any reason they will speak before the board tonight, please stand and take the oath. Anyone going to be? Everybody and the oath is. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth in all matters pertaining to the cases before the Board of Adjustment? Say, I do. Please be seated. Roll call. John Davies. Here. Jack Lehman, that's me. Sarah Wimberly. Here. Cody Atkinson. Here. Tony Summer. We're ready for the city to make their presentation. And this is for. This is case 2399904 concerning uh, East property line fence of applicant Deanna um, Thompson, a variance to the residential fencing standards. Um, Deanna Thompson seeks to keep a six foot solid privacy fence she constructed at the eastern edge of her property that butts a neighboring chain link fence. Its placement um, and future maintenance could be difficult given the um, existing chain link fence at the edge of the abutting property. Further setting the fence back would create a, a difficult landscaping strip to keep trim. Therefore, a fence with the supports facing the interior of the neighboring, the neighbor's property was erected by the applicant. Uh, the neighboring uh, tenant made a code complaint. Uh, the fence will need to be removed unless the variance is granted. In short, the applicant requests a variance to install a fence whose supports are facing the neighbor's property. And as far as the re re city's review, looking over the review criteria, uh, we agree with yeses on uh, one, three, four, five, and six. Okay. Um, Ms. Wimberly, can you uh, turn off lights? Yeah, that helps. Okay. No, you're good. No, that does it. That's good. Okay, so this is the vicinity map. So you can see Nolan Road, the thick black line over there on the left, and 35th Street, and where Emory is and where this uh, property is in relation to Emory and 35th. So here is actually, it's circling the neighbor's property to the east, but the fence is within the circle there on the left hand side. And this is um, the first photograph the applicant provided. And the second photograph provided. So this is from inside her backyard on her side, not the neighbor's side. Uh, this is 
pictures I took. This is the neighbor on the other side, so you can see what the fence situation is on our west. Um, this is looking um, up the hill back toward um, Nolan Road on 35th Street. Uh, this is the homes across the street. And this is um, looking down 35th to the east. And this is the neighbor's house right there. And you can see the fence and then the applicant's corner of the applicant's house there on the left. And then this is a view again from the sidewalk looking at that um, chain link fence on the right and the applicant fence on the left. And just a straight on look at the property. Sorry, could you go back to the picture that showed the other side of the property? The other side? So I, I'm just curious, like the neighbor who made the complaint, is the, the other side also a wooden fence or what? what is the other um, side? So I think that one. So this is the other side of the Yeah, this is the other neighbor point. on the west. I was just given the context of what's on the other side of the house. Actually, I probably should have taken that at another angle. I'm not exactly. I think that, I think it looks like, it looks like the it was put up in the right direction. If I, if, if this corner is anything like it's back in the, gap there. If 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 what's beyond the metal poles is like what we're looking at on the left there, then it is. That one is appropriate the way it's supposed to be done. I don't have the other angle. I should have I'm sorry I didn't get a better picture. Uh, the applicant may know better than I and could, could answer that question when she gets up here. So, <clears throat> Would the applicant please come forward? Can you turn the lights back on? State your name and your address. Uh, Diana Thompson, 14600 East 35th Street. Thank you. Now, would you tell us in your words? I'm sorry, what? Would you tell us in your words, you know, what, what you want? Well, when I the reason originally that I put the fence up was the house next door is a rental. And they had a little boy that would come up to the chain link fence and... My, so my dogs would go up to see him, and then he would kick the fence, trying to kick my dogs. So I put that's the reason I put the fence up to start with. But anyway, it goes right next to the chain link fence, which is my neighbor, so I can't take it down anyway. Did you not hear me? Did you hear what she said? No. <laughs> the, the fence that we put up is next is up against a chain link fence okay. that is my neighbor's. So I, right. we couldn't take the chain link fence down anyway. Okay. So originally, I mean, I know what the codes are. So I called Mr. Harker and talked to him about it. And he agreed that it was better to put it up against the chain link fence than to leave a big gap that we can't maintain, you know, the grass in there. So I called him twice. Second time I called him and I said, give me your name because we're getting ready to put the fence up. And so he gave me his name. He said, it's okay if codes comes, you just tell them that I gave you the okay. Well, codes came and apparently here I am. So I have a letter from the owner that owns the rental that he signed and he said he was fine with it. I have a letter from the new people that are renting and they said they're fine with it. Did you bring those today? Yeah. And then I have this picture of a neighbor 
that did leave a big gap, and this is what it looks like. You can see all the grass and the weeds growing up. So that's what we were trying to avoid. Do you want to see these letters? Yeah, one, two, eleven, and sixty-eight. Yep. So you, you I want guess the my question. Too? So if the if the landlord is fine with it and the tenant is fine with it, then who made the complaint? Was it just? I think it was the people that were there in the rental before. Okay. They moved. Okay. The one with the little boy that was kicking my dogs. Okay. So this so. The old tenants complain and new tenants are fine with it. And right. The current owners and I have a letter from Pat Robinson. Mm -hmm. She owns the property on the other side of the rental. Mm -hmm. And the people that were in there, like I said, the little boy that was trying to kick my dogs, had all kinds of violations. So I'm assuming that that was revenge. You know, it's the reason they called it in. I don't know. Okay, can we see those letters, please? I have the gentleman that constructed the fence, so if you need to speak to him. So I have a, a question. Did you consider um, with the landlord to <coughs> maybe remove their chain link fence and then it would make it easier for you to install it? Correct. I never asked because I'm assuming he didn't want to. You know, I mean... Yeah, there's not much of a gap, correct? Right, about the size of the road. I mean, otherwise we would have had to leave a big gap for somebody to go back there right. and put the pickets face on that one. I mean, yeah, I mean, if it's a small gap, if they don't care if I go on the other side, yeah, I can spray it. That's what I have to do with that picture, right. which is the neighbors, because they don't maintain it. So I have to go over there and spray it. It's hard to explain where their fence is compared, you know, to my yard, but yeah. That's what I was trying to avoid is that gap. <coughs> Any more questions? I have one for Mr. Harker. Okay. Um, Mr. Harker, do you still stand by what you said to her? Um, regarding the fence, I'm not. I'm not sure what you're asking. Well, she's she's cited that you've told her more than once it was okay. I mean, I I don't remember the conversation completely, but you know, it, the I I did I like I normally say, you know, it there there's there's certain situations where it's sometimes difficult to to maintain and you know you're 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 in in danger of 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 the other person you know making a complaint against you if if you if you haven't followed the code um, I was I, w I was incorrect in that I should have said that she should have tried to get a, a variance first. Just gives us a few moments here to look at the letters.
anything further you want to say? Okay. Is there anyone in rebuttal? Anybody else that wants to speak for the motion? <clears throat> My name's Kevin Dieter. I live at 1619 South Swope Drive. Can you uh, put the microphone up on the next tier there and make sure you speak into it? Better? <laughs> okay, so the reason we put the fence as close as we did is because she didn't want her dogs digging underneath and being stuck behind it. So that's the reason it's only about that far. But otherwise, after that, you know, that's the real reason it's only this close. Or I would have left a little more, but she didn't want her dogs getting trapped. So I put it as close as I could get so they couldn't get underneath if okay, they wanted you, to. You erected the fence? Yes. Okay. That's Any all. Questions? Thank you. Thank you. No questions? Now, anybody in rebuttal? Gentleman behind you. Oh. All right. Good evening, everyone. My name is Hector Vidalas. My mom over there is Nina Vidalas. Um, 3425 South Embry, so we're right behind Diana, in a way. Um, we're against this matter just solely because um, we we purchased the house two years ago, and um, we didn't have any problems with Diana until maybe a year back, and we, we get all these uh, possible code violations, complaints from her, uh, same with the old renters that she used to live with, um, so once we get that, we correct our issues right away, and we believe that everything should be fair. She should also take the proper um, measures like she's doing now. So we just wanted to say we we're just against the fence, and you know, best of luck to her. But yeah, our family's just against it, and that's all I had to say. Any questions? So, so sorry, where do you live? 3425 South Emory Street. So, so, so like in relation to this, are you directly behind her? Or uh, so from, I believe, 35th Street, uh, we are, I would say, to the west, to the west of her. Uh, we just constructed our fence also a few months ago to have added privacy. So, and we did it the right way also. Sorry, so what, what street are you on? Thirty. Uh, so Emory Street, South Emory Street. Okay, so you're kind of on the. Perpetrator. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we're on the other side of the fence. Okay, yeah. so you're next door to her, just yes. on the, on the yes. other street. Okay, I see. I see. I see. Yeah. 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 Of course. Yeah. Any questions? Anyone else want to speak against? Please come forward if. No one else to speak against. You have something? This is his Rebuttal. fence. <laughs> that he that he left the big gap. And he already has a code violations. I mean, I haven't turned him in. He has five dogs, which is code violation. And I don't know why he said I called on other violations. I don't know what he's talking about. If he has violations, that's from somebody else. Uh, can you be sure you speak into the microphone then, please? Oh. But, yeah, this is his fence where he left the gap that we have to maintain. Anyone else? We'll close the, the meeting. Can I ask 
Yes. Um, members of the board, it's best if your discussion is on the record, which means it's on the microphone. Okay. okay. Don't discuss between yourselves to make okay. a decision when it's not on the record. Okay. So my thinking is going through this six point list, everything is a yes except for two. And two is about the rights of the adjacent property owners. So in this case, there's only one adjacent property owner, which is the property that it borders. And so if this property owner is fine with it, then in my mind, that would meet number two. And so then all of the requirements for a variance would be met. Okay. And so that's, that's sort of what I'm thinking. I, w I would agree with that. I'd agree. So long as that gap is maintained in three units, then I, I don't see a, a problem personally. And the property owners has no problem with it. Yeah, the property owners have seen a letter from her. So, do we have a motion? Um, I, I'll move that. Um, Case number 23999-04 be approved. Second. All in favor? All in favor, aye. 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 I'm supposed to call the roll. Okay, Tony? Aye. And uh, Sarah? I vote yes. And uh, John? Yes. And Cody? Yes. The motion is carried. We approved the application as submitted for 23999 04. for the next case. Hang on just a minute while we uh, get this configured here. Okay. Okay, this is a request by uh, Marlon Masadas and Moses Alvarado for a uh, variance to the uh, commercial fence requirements for property at uh, 9808 East Wilson Road. You can see on the aerial photograph, I mean on the uh, vicinity map, where this is roughly. Um, if the board remembers from six years ago, uh, Mr. Posadas was before the board asked for a fence to put around this property so he could keep his vehicles and keep trash oh, yeah. and debris yeah. and uh, the board did approve the variance at that time and uh, later uh, the Posadas has acquired another property and uh, decided to locate their business there instead of this location recently he sold the property to uh, Mr. Alvarado and he seeks to install the fence at this location to keep uh, uh, the homeless and trash dumpers and eventually he like to pay part of it and put some of his trucks there behind this fence. Um, <clears throat> basically, kind of see this is this is the plan that uh, was provided previously seven years ago um, that uh, Mr. Posadas did because he has a driveway off of uh, Wilson Road going north into the site 
the area is uh, somewhat cleared already, and uh, at that time his plan was to fence in. This plan only shows three sides. I think the idea was at that time there was the stream buffer that was, it was not known what would happen, and so that's why that the western side was kind of left open. Uh, since then, that stream buffer issue has come up, and uh, <coughs> This is why this is the stream buffer. Unfortunately, this drawing is not correct. Uh, the stream is actually the yellow lines, and the buffer is not within along the yellow line. So the uh, buffer that you see that runs through the middle of the lot is actually closer to the uh, southwest corner. Uh, the uh, gentleman from uh, municipal services kind of... Uh, winged where the uh, buffer would go. Uh, he showed the 85 foot line. So if you follow the, the vertical uh, yellow line where the stream is and you go 85 feet, then it kind of shows you where those little red lines are. So the buffer would flow along those lines. <coughs> so uh, they could still use the, uh, it would be basically the southeast corner and most of the north part of the property for their business. And uh, their plan is to, they seek to put the uh, fence up with the solid fence along the front and then the uh, a chain link around the other areas. Um, <clears throat> it, it, well, it'll be similar to the, what was done before. Okay, this is... Uh, here we're on uh, uh, Wilson Road looking north into the site. That's the existing driveway that goes into there. He's done some paving, I mean some clearing and, and I think some chip and zeal or some sort of paving up there already, probably from the previous times, that, uh, but there's nothing up there right now. Those two poles that are out there, they actually have little lights on them. Uh, here is another view of the site. It's kind of the uh, eastern portion of the site. Um, here we're looking to the northeast. Uh, the applicant's property is off to the left. Uh, here we're looking east down Wilson Road. It's pretty, uh, pretty, uh, not a real busy street. Uh, this is the property that's directly across the street to the south. And here we're looking west up Wilson Road. And the applicant's property, along with the stream, is uh, off to the right here. And this is more or less where the stream comes up to the road, a little bit to the left there. The applicant's property, again, is the driveway is off to the right of the screen, off to off the right of the screen. Is, uh, Stuart, is this extra property did, he, did I hear you say that? that uh, well, this is actually the same basic property, property. that was before. Uh, he had talked about adding uh, some onto the eastern. Side. He also owns that property that's immediately to the east of the site, mm -hmm. but not to the west. Uh, so there's actually sort of two lots there. Okay. But he'll be fencing in the, the portion. So, so how's that map oriented up? Well, north is at the top. Okay, and east would be at the left. E yeah, e well, east is actually to the right. Oh, really? Okay. And then, um, and then uh, uh, Wilson Road is that road along the bottom. Uh, yeah, the, the white road or the yeah the white road along the that's, that's the horizontal. And the other one's Twenty Four Highway. No, no Twenty Four Highway track. is quite a bit south of here. Oh, that's a railroad track there. Yeah, the railroad tracks is right along the top. And then uh, Wilson Road comes over, and it, it, there is a crossing that goes north, just goes yeah, to the I northeast, see. just right there. And then I Wilson Road that, goes yeah. stra uh, almost where is to the, the southeast. Where is the property we approved? To, to put so the same, it's the same, same property. Same one? Where's yeah. the, I, you didn't, was there a fence ever put up? No. They just approved it? We just approved it? They didn't put a fence up? Yeah, that is correct. They approved it, and then they found another location for their business, okay. just not very far down the street. All right. I didn't understand that, the timeline. Okay. Yeah. So the fence was never put up that we approved. That is correct. So okay. I, I have a couple of questions. Um, so that previous approval, it 
doesn't carry over to new owners? Is that no, there's a there's a, a time frame that you have to construct what was approved in the ordinance, or it it basically expires. Okay. Uh, and then my other question is, I'm a little confused on what exactly our portion of this is. So it, if we approve the variance, would they still have to get approval from municipal services for this buffer area? Or are we approving the buffer area? No. Basically, you're approving a variance for them to put up a fence that doesn't have a built on property that doesn't have a building on okay. it. Okay. That's what I thought. Now, when they apply for a fence permit through building permits, they will have to provide a site plan that shows where the fence is going to be on the property, and then municipal services will have to work with them on where they can actually put the fence and be out of the stream buffer. Okay. So, um, okay, that, that was what I was thinking. So I guess my question is, um, I'm a little surprised that we don't, allow fences on uh, vacant properties. What is the reasoning behind that? Well, we have found that fences around <laughs> vacant property tend to collect things that are not, uh, shouldn't be there. Uh, sometimes they get full of junk cars and trash and things before you know it. So we say no fences around vacant lots. Okay. But in this case, they're planning on, what are they planning on doing with the property? I guess that might be a better question. Well, they, uh, from my understanding, uh, they, after they uh, uh, finish the grading and, you know, paving or whatever they're going to do, he's going to park his construction vehicles. You know, this is a driveway that goes into it, and the construction vehicles will be up there at the top of the hill, so to speak. So. And I don't know if he's going to put a little building up there or not. So I guess that would still count as a vacant lot if they didn't have a building on it. Yeah, that once they put a little building on there, that would be correct. But the code also says that you're not supposed to put a fence between the street and the building. So regardless, that would be part of it. Okay. Are there a lot of Well, the applicant says that they they get code violations for having numerous trash and debris out there, and uh, it's not surprising. I guess one, I guess I do have one more question. When this was previously approved six, seven years ago, there was plans to put a business on it. Yes, uh, Mr. Posadas, who was the owner at that time, was going to park his trucks there. Okay. Um, so his business is similar to the new owners. Okay. 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 Well, do we have someone to speak for the? We got pictures too. That's yeah. how he showed. Straight, state your name, please, and your address. Oh. Uh, what is this? <laughs> 9808 East Wilson Road. Where you live? What is it? Um, my name is Moises Alvarado. I live in uh, 1114 North Holland Drive, Independence. And uh, we have some uh, pictures that we took, you know, just to show you guys that uh, the problems that we have. Uh, at this property, you know, uh, a lot of people are been dumping stuff on our property there. And this pictures that I have uh, here um, has been from this month, uh, but uh, we have been dealing with this since ever we purchased this lot. Okay, why don't you uh, give the board the picture so they can see. <coughs> No, no phone pictures. That's okay. No, this is about the phone that lives on the bottom of the line. Okay, okay. You, you, you we got one here. No, just we took it five minutes ago. We were cleaning. You can see that we got a canter over there. And that's on your property? Yes, and the property line. Oh, the property line. Yeah, they're in between, you know. Yeah. But they live there. And they, 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 they use, you know, it's not your fault, but it's not mine. City, 
Oh, okay. You need to come back to the microphone. Whatever, you know, explain, uh, if you get a speak, you need to give your name and address. 1204 North Sucor Independence, Marlon Posadas. Um, whatever Mr. Stewart explained to you that it is, is nothing we can do, but we just are, are waiting for your approval. We got it before seven years ago. I mean, it's nothing changed. It's just more people or more homeless live on our property. In seven years, it's worse. That's why we try to fence the, the property and make it better. Make it better. That means it's going to be more money for you guys, I mean, for the city, because it's going to charge me more taxes. That means it's fair enough, you know, fair to make the property better, and you're going to charge me more taxes. That means we good, we even. <laughs> well, I do have a question. How tall of a fence are you putting in? How high? Well, norm normal, what I uh, used to learn with Mr. Stewart in the city around here, is around, uh, I think it's six foot or six or eight foot, something like that. You know, they got the code and we go by the code, okay. they say. We don't go over whatever it's supposed to be. Okay. No. Chain link, I'm assuming? Chain link, we got a uh, chain link the, the, with uh, Mr. Stewart asking us, uh, has a, um, how do you call it? Um, it's a coded or? Cody, whatever yeah, that is. Yeah, uh, city code requires it to be vinyl coded. Now, you said that you were going to put a solid fence along the front and then chain link around the rest, or what was the decision here? Well, whatever is fair, we we don't have the, the we bought it already chain link for the whole property. We got the, um, how many square, like a 20, whatever, the whole property, we bought it already. But we assume it, because we saw a lot of properties almost the same, we got the material already. But whatever you design, if you want, we put gold, in front, we're gonna do it. We want is the permit, you know. Okay. Any questions? So, can you ex sorry? Can you explain uh, what you're going to do with the property? What your plans are for it? When I used to have seven years, or still that pro because we got the same business, is uh, put the fence around and then uh, grading make. Uh, we park trucks, you know, park the trucks that we want to do it. So far we put a uh, post line, light, you know, like that, at least, you know, to see who's, who stole the stuff. And in the future we want to put something to get electricity and get a cameras. It's still not good, but we want to make better. Okay, so you're talking about dumb trucks, not pickup trucks, but construction no, it's a, vehicles. It's, it's a vehicles. We're not going to dump it, nothing there. Just park a truck. There's a truck we're going to park. We got, he got three, three trucks for that big property, but we need to fence around anyway. No more questions for me. Um, I have another one. So um, in terms of the other properties in that area, are they also vacant, or what are they being used for? Is there anything similar around there? Yes, couple. I own the other ones too around there. Okay. I'm the owner, so then okay. next door or whatever. But uh, I don't apply for that because I don't need it now. I don't want to pay more taxes. Right. Not much. Any further questions? Anyone in to speak against? You can sit down. I won't say anything. Don't say anybody. <coughs> no one else here? <laughs> He's not speaking against. <laughs> okay, we'll close this portion of the meeting. Did staff have any, any communication? Uh, no, I had no calls on this. I don't think I had any calls on it last time. You know, out there in this area, there's a lot of uh, vacant properties and commercial type properties, and generally we don't get calls on, on those type of things. I would like to say, to remind the applicant, though, that once they apply for the permit, the stream buffer will come into play, and they'll have to work with municipal services to for the location of that fence, which it may not be, well, it's not going to be all the way around the property. Like, like it's shown on an earlier plan, 
it's going to be a different than that. Does a six foot fence? Six foot is fine. Is that right? Okay. Yeah, that, that's fine. They can put up eight foot if they want, but uh, that would be the maximum. But six foot is, is fine. Okay. Typical. So, sorry, just for clarification again. It, the, the spirit of this rule is that if you put a fence around a vacant property, then you know people are not the people who own it are not going to be there very often, and it's just going to accumulate stuff compared to a a property with something on it where people are going to be there. Uh, that's a, a big big part of the reason. Yes, okay. it's for security purposes. Right. So, kind of what I was thinking is. Um, even though it will technically remain vacant within the spirit of the rule, they're going to be using it. Mm -hmm. So within the spirit of the rule, it's not really vacant, even though there's technically not a building on it. Uh, yeah, we, we consider a lot vacant if there's no building on it. Right. So, yeah, but I'm saying within the spirit of it is that they're going to be there frequently. It's it, mm -hmm. They're going to be using it. They're going to have it, be using it for practical purposes. That's right. So, in that spirit. Um, you can't talk. Oh, sorry. That's what we're doing right now. Um, I think it's great we've got a small business in the city, um, especially in that area that needs investment. Uh, I don't see a problem with the property owner wanting to have a fence around them. We can have a little security. We approved it once before. Anyway, are we ready for a motion? I think so. Usually. Uh, a motion to approve. But okay. you got to say it. 